All right guys, what's up? Today's gonna be a little bit of a different tutorial. Today I'm gonna be doing half my face one way, half my face the other. So I don't know if I would call it a tutorial so much as kind of like a, a comparison. So back when grunge was around, I didn't really wear makeup. I didn't really wear a lot of makeup. I think maybe I wore like mascara. Obviously I was really young. Um, some might say too young for makeup. So I just really wasn't into makeup at the time. I was, however, into grunge. And um, any extra money that I got, I didn't spend on makeup. I spent it on CDs. For those of you who remember <laughs> CDs. Um, grunge music, of course, like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Temple of the Dog, STP, Cranberries, of course, um, Candlebox, if you can call them grunge, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, you know, all of the like all of the grunge music that was popular back when I was younger. So anyway, I only recently though, kind of in the past few years have gotten into like the grunge makeup. There is like modern grunge, what people are calling grunge these days, not actually what people wore back in the grunge days. It's kind of like a modern interpretation of that makeup style. Dark eyes looking like you hadn't really slept a lot, like the kind of sleepy eye look. Thin brows were huge in the 90s, which actually I'm not gonna be doing today because well, number one, I can't find my tweezers. So even if I wanted to tweeze half of my face, half my eyebrows, I wouldn't be able to. But um, just because, you know, not everybody wore thin brows back then. But when I think of 90s grunge, I think of like red lip for sure, like Courtney Love, like absolutely Drew Barrymore even. I'm gonna do half my face in like the traditional 90s grunge. But the other half of my face in a modern interpretation of grunge, which is what we've come to know in the past few years as grunge, even though it's not actually grunge. It's grunge with air quotes. The red eyeshadow thing has really become associated with grunge, despite the fact that that was not the case in the 90s. Red eyeshadow wasn't really that trendy in the 90s. It wasn't even a thing at that point. To my knowledge, I don't remember seeing it anywhere. The whole look I'm gonna be using this palette for, this is the Wet n Wild Rose in the air. This is the Modern Renaissance dupe. And honestly, I think I can get pretty much any shadow that I need for this look out of this palette. It's five bucks. I like it almost better than Modern Renaissance because I think a lot of the formula is better. Um, if you wanna go check out my comparison between the two, I will link it up here. Now, if you ever like go back and actually look up like 90s grunge makeup, like what you're gonna find is pr pretty much just Tumblr grunge. You're gonna find modern reinterpretations of it. A few makeup tutorials have actually done like a more historically accurate 90s grunge. Um, Sharon Farrell, she actually did like, um, a 90s like Courtney Love tutorial that I freaking love. It's amazing. I'll see if I can like dig it up and like link it for you guys, but there are just so many different ways to interpret makeup at any given point in time, and the 90s was no exception. However, today I am going for um, kind of a darker eye, like a Courtney Love kind of feel. All right, so this eye, I'm going to do the traditional grunge, what I think of when I think of like historically accurate 90s grunge, and that's what I'm gonna do for this side of my face. I'm just gonna take this like transition shade from the palette, the more cool toned one. When I think of like true grunge makeup, I think of like messy, don't give a crap what your makeup looks like, sleepy eyes. Courtney Love would do her makeup one way. Dolores O'Riordan was definitely known for like the more smoky eye. Basically just putting that all over my lid. Actually gonna take a little bit of that more warm transition shade. Throw this on my lid, not really in my crease. I hate that people, I hate that they call the trend heroin chic. That just makes me really, really mad. I hate that. That's fucking stupid. Not my favorite terminology to say the very least. Then I'm just gonna take that brown shade in the palette, the darker brown, and uh, keep this pretty close to my lash line here. But you can definitely take it up higher if you want to. There are a bunch of ways to do 90s grunge. This is only one of them. This is actually really similar to the look I did in my no foundation routine. I want less dimension here though, for sure. For this eye, I'm gonna start with that camel transition shade. Put it right in my crease. But I'm definitely gonna bring it out a little bit further. Whereas the other one, I'm kind of focused right on my eye socket. This one's gonna go further out. And further up as well, closer to my brow here. In the orange shade, and I'm gonna put that right in my crease here. Kind of like, lightly touching my brush though. I'm not gonna jam my brush in there. 
I'm using a very light hand with it. I definitely want it built up in my crease, but the, by using a light hand, I'm preventing it from getting too far out. gonna take this medium shadow brush by Real Techniques. I'm going into that red ochre dupe, which is the obvious, the red shade in the palette, not the magenta, the red. And I'm gonna put that all over my eyelid. Just going back in and making sure I get that shape right. I want the shape to kind of go back, like back further, kind of in the shape of a wing. I want it to come out pretty far. Now, real quick, I'm just gonna take that um, brown shade. I'm actually gonna mix it with that lighter brown shimmery shade just to lighten it up a bit. And I'm gonna put that really close to my lash line. So when I do my foundation on this side of my face, I'm gonna do a much lighter coverage than on this side of my face. This side of my face is gonna be full freaking coverage because the modern grunge movement is normally something you'll see lots and lots of full coverage makeup and then of course the red eyeshadow but again there's so many different ways to do both of these makeup styles like it, there's just so many different ways so that's about as much coverage as i'm going to do on this side i don't even think i'm going to do if i do any concealer i might just add a little more foundation here but on this side this is the coverage side I'm gonna build it up more. I've already, I'm already like preferring this side of my face, strangely. I've never done half full coverage, half not. I never would have guessed that I would prefer the side with less coverage, but, hmm, interesting. I'm gonna do concealer, of course. And we're doing like, we're doing the concealer, the concealer that I never really do. But that's what we're doing, because... So on this side of my face, I am going to powder the crap out of it as you know best I can. Just kind of put a little bit of powder on this side of my face. I don't want to lose the finish of my skin here. On this side of my face, I'm actually going to use the translucent RCMA No Color Powder. keep a circular shape going on my eye. So right under my eyeball. I'm not gonna line the waterline, but to make it almost appear a little more droopy, I'm gonna add some depth to the outer corner on the bottom here. And I'm going to add it right here to the outer corner a bit. If you kind of squint, you can find where your eyeball is, right beneath that, right here. Take that warm transition shade. Connecting it to the top, unlike the other where I just went in my eye socket, this has got a definite, like, almost like a wing shape. And I am taking it down pretty far, as you can see. Put that kind of tight up here next to my lash line. I am gonna do my brows, but I'm just gonna do them normally because, you know, people wore their brows different back then. Yes, they were generally thinner, but this side, however, I am gonna just, I'm gonna make it a little more like perfect and drawn on than this side. This side's obviously gonna be a little more like my natural brow. Actually, to make it appear thinner, I'm just gonna fill in the inner part of my brow here and then not the outside.
blush and bronzer. Now, bronzer didn't really pick up a lot of steam in the 90s as like a necessary step in my opinion, or at least not that I remember. I don't remember, or in the early 90s rather, I don't really remember bronzer becoming a necessary step in people's makeup routines until like the late 90s, early 2000s, and then like the early 2000s, it just really, really caught on like Everybody had to have bronzer instead of blush. I had a lot of friends that didn't even wear blush. They just wore bronzer. That was like, that was just the thing. So I'm not going to use bronzer actually on this side of my face. However, we're doing bronzer on this side. You know it. And we're contouring. We're doing it all on this side. I am going to contour this side of my face as well. Just gonna use this middle shade from this eyeshadow palette, the Makeup Revolution palette. I'm gonna use this Precision Blush Brush by Eco Tools. It's basically my favorite contour. And we're like, I'm going in with the contour. I'm not doing any kind of natural contour. It's taking away the coverage on my face, but that's fine, I can fix it. I'm actually gonna use the same blush on both sides of my face because I don't really have a lot of blushes and, but it is a good 90s color because it is kind of a, it gives kind of like a flushed look which is good. Obviously it's gonna look a little different when it's on its own, especially with all this, like no, not as much coverage compared to what it's gonna look like on this side of my face. But we're gonna use the same blush for both sides. Okay, now on this side of my face, like this side I just kinda of did the normal, like oh, blend it in with your bronzer contour kinda. Um, on my other side of my face, however, I'm just gonna swirl it kind of on the apples of my cheeks. Like if I were gonna have like a natural flush, where that would be and I'm kind of knocking some of the excess off on my arm here and just swirling it I'm gonna keep it closer to my nose than on this side I'm not gonna highlight the side of my face because I don't really remember that being a thing in the 90s maybe in like film and stuff and like drag culture but it just didn't really hit mainstream until you know recent years so on the other side however I am gonna use Becca's Moonstone Almost looks like I have no makeup on on this side compared to this side, which is kind of funny. I'm just gonna do mascara now on this side of my face. I'm actually gonna use this Too Faced, but I am, what I'm gonna do is kind of concentrate it on the outer part of my eye. I'm not gonna put too much mascara on the inner part. I'm almost trying to weigh down the outer part, the outer corner of my eye. This side I'm gonna use my like more heavy mascara. This is like my favorite mascara right now. This is the Essence Lash Princess False Effect Mascara. For lips, like I said in the 90s, like red lips were kind of the thing, at least in the grunge scene. Um, I'm gonna actually use a more muted red lipstick. This is the NYX Alabama, no, this one's called Crazed by NYX, it's their matte formula. I'm gonna do that on this side, but I'm not gonna make it super perfect. I want it to almost look like a stain, like cherry stain, I don't know. Definitely like smudging it around a lot more, like the lip line doesn't need to be perfect or anything. For the other side, I'm gonna use like a more dark, red brown this is Salem by Lime Crime I feel like that is what a lot of people kind of default to in a modern interpretation of grunge is that like dark late 90s brown So yeah, this is the finished look. I mean, I wouldn't exactly call it a look, more of an experiment. I just thought I would kind of shed some light on the original take on 90s makeup versus its modern interpretation. Yeah, anyway guys, I hope you found this interesting. If you'd like to see like a full face of either of these where I don't look so freaking nuts, let me know and I'll totally do that. But like I said, this was just a little bit of an experiment it's a video I've been wanting to do for a while. Anyway guys, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber and you wanna be, just hit that button on your way out and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.